everybody this is Jen welcome to my channel if you're new here welcome if you're friends already welcome back today we're gonna be tie-dyeing rainbows fire that's right and here hearts on garden Jen's journey All right, so if you're new here, tie-dyeing is one of the ways that I earn income right here on the homestead. And I started doing a couple of videos just to show you guys what I do. Tie-dyeing is fun. Um, I really enjoy doing it and my customers love it as well. So I'm going to take you out to the kitchen where I actually do my tie-dyes. So this is my bucket where I have shirts soaking in soda ash solution. So it is time to take these out. They've been soaking in here for a couple days, but they only need to actually soak in the soda ash solution for about 20 minutes. And then uh, you can wring them out and you're ready to go. So I'm going to throw these into my wash for the spin cycle only and we'll get ready to tie dye. So this is my kitchen table, which I don't use as a dining table. It's more used as a countertop because of the way that my kitchen's set up. But you can see I have my eggs and some things there. Um, but I have these large silicone mats that I use to cover my kitchen table because these are very easy to clean. And with tie-dye, you need something that's very easy to clean especially since you're working with white you want to make sure there's nothing on your surface that's going to stain your white fabric before you get to color it the colors you want i will put links in the description box below to all the different tools that i use when i tie dye because i won't go through them all you can watch some of my other videos where i talk more in depth today i'm just going to show you how i'm going to tie dye these different shirts okay so I have my shirts that have been spun in the washer um, so they're they're damp but they're not soaking wet so we're gonna set these aside in a single clump here because I have quite a few I have to do today um, these are part of an order that I received because of one of my uh, YouTube viewers. So thank you for your order and your support of my channel. So um, if you're watching, you get to see how your shirts are made. So again, thank you for supporting the channel. Um, there is a link in the description box below for others. Um, if you want to check out my Etsy shop where I have soaps and lotions and things and shirts that I do right here on the channel. So again, the link is in the description box below if you want to check that out. I also have Instagram account for both um, uh, Garden Jen's Journey and for my business, Colorful Creations. And I'll put the links for those down in the description box below as well. And this is going to be the uh, fire and water design that I'm going to do today. And it's got a inverted V uh, line to it that separates the fire and the water um, elements of the tie-dye. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to shirt, fold the shirt with it inside out. You always do tie-dyes inside out with uh, powdered dyes just in case the powder doesn't completely dissolve. All right. Then we're going to find the center of the shirt 
and fold it in half with front sides together. I'm going to go a little bit faster with this video. I might fast forward some parts. If you want to know more about why I do what I do or what I do, I do have some other videos. Um, I will put uh, a card up above for the other videos. And you can always ask me questions in the comments below. And I will try to answer them or, if necessary, do a video on that specific questions so everybody gets to see that answer. Alright, so now the shirt's folded in half with front sides together and then the back sides together. Alright, and now to do the invert, we're simply going to draw a upward diagonal that way. Actually, I want it a little bit further down. So I'm going to do it here. There we go. And again, I am using a washable marker. This will wash out. I lost my cap. There's my cap. Alright. So now we're going to fold on that line. This pinching and gathering the fabric along the line, making the line line up with itself. Okay, and then I'm going to use sinew because I want the line really, really tight and defined. So the line is done, and this is the only line really on this shirt that I'm going to worry about. <clears throat> the rest is more of a crumple. So we're just going to take this and we're going to scrunch it together. Make it all wrinkly. That's what gives a nice textured look to that. And take some rubber bands and I reuse my rubber bands as much as possible less waste and I just rinse them off and put them in a colander so they drain but I reuse them as much as possible all right that side is nice and crumpled Work on the next one. Alright, 
so the fire and water is ready to go. I'm going to set that over. I'm going to tie all my shirts first and then we'll bring out the dyes. That way I don't get dye all over here, have to clean it up to do the next shirt. I try to get everything tied first and then make a mess with my dye. So the next one we're going to do is going to be the heart shape and it's uh, really fun to do. It's really easy to do um, technically speaking but uh, you know things happen that sometimes they don't turn out quite right. So the same thing we're going to find the center we're going to fold this in half and then we're going to make our marks. So I'm going to speed this part up and I'll show you how to mark this when we get to that point. Alright, the shirt is folded in half and we're ready to go. So with the heart design or anything that is symmetrical that you want to put on a shirt, you only have to draw half of it because it's folded in half so it's automatically going to mirror. So we're just going to draw half of a heart. And that's a lot easier to do half of one than try to draw the whole thing and get it symmetrical. So there's our heart. I actually want to make it just a little bit fatter. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay. And now we're going to fold this up just like we did for our inverted V. gently get the shirt to follow along where we want it to go. And just follow the curve. And as you fold it, it will turn out. Alright, there we go. Now we got that heart into a straight line on the folds there. Straight lines. Now we're going to tie her up. All right, there we go. All right, so we got the heart part done. Now I'm going to do another line that's going to be our outline of the heart. And that's, we're simply just gonna tie one more spot just a little bit beyond where the first tie is. That's a little too much. We're going to move it down. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Now I hold it flat down because I want my folds to stay flat and not bunch up when they get pulled because this pole is really really tight and if you don't hold it out if you don't hold it down it's just gonna bend like this and you're not gonna be able to do anything with it so I um, keep it straight flat on the table so when I pull it tight it stays flat all right and then after I get this tied in here we're going to scrunch this up just like we did the other one for that textured look. So I just unfold it and wrinkle it up. Oh, 
All right. So our heart one is done. Now on to the rainbow. Again, I'm going to fold this shirt in half. And I'll bring you back when we get ready to do the folding for the rainbow. All right, so to do the inverted V rainbow, um, this shirt is folded in half and we're just going to fold this on the diagonal. So I'm starting on this corner and working my way in. We're going to do about an inch folds here. I'm just going to fold back and forth. <laughs> Gently get the shirt to Start folding as we go upwards. Right. This is the tricky part, is getting it to fold correctly up the entire length of the shirt. So on this one, I'm going to use rubber bands, and I want to start here where I finish folding all this material so it does not come undone. Makes it easier to work with. broke my rubber band. It happens because I said I reuse these a lot. Okay, now that's secure. I'm going to gently fold again. This sleeve does not want to work with me today. There we go. All right. So I'm going to continue folding this and tying it with these rubber bands. And then I'll bring you back here for the dyeing process. All right. So the first shirt I'm going to tie dye is going to be the fire and water design. And that takes quite a few dyes, so I'm going to tell you what they are before we dye them. I'm going to be using Raven Black, Fire Red. This is Bright Red, and it's from Grateful Dyes. The rest of these are from Dharma Trading Company, and the link will be in the description box below. We got Brilliant Blue. Robin's Egg Blue, Sky Blue, Cobalt Blue, Orange Crush, and Lemon Yellow. I am wearing gloves today because we're going to be working with a lot of different dyes and I don't want to get uh, the different dyes on the other shirts as I work with them. So. We're going to start off doing the fire portion first, but actually we're going to do the dividing line first, so that's marked, and that will be with the raven black. Just got put there along the dividing line. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and do the fire and the water. Now I'm going to uh, cover this with a little light dusting of soda ash. That way when I put the ice on it, it does not dilute the pH of the shirt. And the colors will stick nicely to the shirt. I'm going to go ahead and work on getting the other shirts dyed. Then I'm going to put the ice on all of them and set them outside in the sun for the ice to melt through. Okay, so this is the heart shirt that we're going to do. I'm using fire, or excuse me, bright red, lemon yellow, marigold, and I got this one from Grateful Dyes, and then raven black. So again, I'm going to start with the black because it's the darkest color. I want to make sure to get it where it's supposed to be. I'm going to put that in the outline area. A little bit more. It takes a lot of black powder to get that dark black because it's such a dark color. Alright, so we got the black there. Now we're going to put the red on the heart. I'm actually going to add a little bit of fire red to it just to give it a little more color. There we go. And now our yellows. I'm also going to use citrus yellow. It's a beautiful light yellow. So it helps soften the colors just a little bit because the yellow and red can be quite bright. Tone that down just a little. All right. So again, we're putting on soda ash and setting this aside and getting the other one going. All right, so I have the rainbow shirt all spiraled up in here and, and put in my little silicone ring. And again, the links to what I use are in the description box below. So I'm doing the seven color traditional rainbow and the colors for that rainbow are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. That's the actual name of the colors in the rainbow. So to get those rainbow colors with the tie-dye colors, I'm going to be using fire red, orange crush, lemon yellow, this is emerald green from Grateful Dyes. You can also get it from Dharma. Sky blue, cobalt blue, and deep purple. So now I'm going to add the dyes.
Okay, so that's what our rainbow looks like. I'm going to add the soda ash. Now I'm going to put ice on them and set them outside. So I will bring you back when it's time to wash them out, which is going to be in my time 24 hours later. In your time, just a few seconds. All right, so we're back to start rinsing out these shirts. I'm going to start rinsing them in cold water, and then I'll untie them and turn, start turning the water up to rinse it in hot, hotter water. And then eventually I'm going to be soaking them in some hot soapy water in some tubs to try to release some extra dye before they go in the wash. Blues and reds have a lot of extra dye because they're very concentrated. So uh, these take a bit to wash out. But I'm just going to show you some of the wash out and then I'll bring you back here to show you what they look like once they are washed and dried. Alright, so I'm going to show you what the fire and water is starting to look like now that I've rinsed it out. It's going to change a little bit as it gets washed and dried. But there's the fire and water. Now on to the next one. Alright, so here's the heart design on the crumpled background. Kind of what it's looking like at the moment. And that'll be washed and dried. Alright, so here is what the rainbow design is starting to look like. A lot of these colors will rinse a little bit lighter in the washout. You kind of get an idea. So I hope that you really enjoyed this video on seeing how I do some other tie-dyes. If you enjoy seeing these types of videos, make sure to hit the like button and comment down below. If there's a specific design you would like me to try to do that it, maybe I've never done before, comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and expand my artistic abilities, so to speak. Thank you for being with me today. And I'd love to have you along on the journey if you aren't already. So make sure to click the subscribe button as well. Thank you so much. And I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. So until next time, everybody, bye-bye.